Back in the 70s, a pitcher named Tommy John got his busted elbow ligament swapped out for a spare tendon, and people probably thought he'd been rebuilt in a sci-fi lab. Fast forward to 2025, and Tommy John's surgery is less futuristic marvel, more welcome gift basket for pitchers. The scary bit? Torn elbows are multiplying like gremlins. Turns out throwing 100 mile per hour sliders every other pitch is like asking your ulnar collateral ligament to hold up a collapsing Jenga tower during a hurricane. Good luck with that. What exactly is a Tommy John? And why is it so popular? Before diving into the carnage, let's clear up what Tommy John surgery actually is. It's formally called ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction, and it involves replacing a torn elbow ligament with a tendon graft from elsewhere in the body, often the forearm, hamstring, or sometimes even a cadaver donor. The surgery was pioneered in 1974 by Dr. Frank Job on Dodgers pitcher Tommy John, and against all odds it worked. John went on to win 164 more games after the operation, which is probably why his name became shorthand for the procedure. The success rate today is astonishing by surgical standards. Around 80 to 97% of pitchers return to play after their first Tommy John, though only about two-thirds return to exactly the same level of performance. That sounds promising until you realize that, that the rehab process takes about a year and a second Tommy John has a much lower success rate. So while the surgery can feel like a miracle cure, it's not a magical elbow upgrade. It's more like calling a plumber, the pipe is fixed, but don't expect it to suddenly carry more water than before. How common is Tommy John surgery? Now, if you're picturing Tommy John surgery as something rare, like an eclipse, I've got bad news. In 2023, data from John Rogel's long-running injury database showed that about one-third of all active MLB pitchers had undergone the procedure at some point in their career. That's more than 200 players in the big leagues alone. And that's just the majors, college, minor league, and even high school pitchers are increasingly joining the club, sometimes before they've even had their prom photos developed. The trend line is brutally consistent. As average fastball velocity has risen over the last two decades, so have the number of elbows giving out. The league has crunched the numbers, and the conclusion is clear. It's not the pitch clock, not the introduction of the sweeper, and not a hidden voodoo curse. The biggest culprit is velocity and the strain of max effort pitching mechanics. In fact, MLB's own internal study admitted what everyone suspected. Every extra tick on the radar gun comes with a bill, and that bill is usually paid by the ulnar collateral ligament, the velocity arms race. Back in the 90s, a 95 mile per hour heater was sports center material. Now, that's just the Tuesday matinee. By 2025, the average fastball hit 94.4 miles per hour, the highest ever, and 100 miles per hour pitches are about as rare as parking tickets in New York. The jump from 90 to 95 doesn't just sound small, it feels like, oh, five more miles an hour. But biomechanically, it's like upgrading from bumper cars to Formula One. The elbow simply wasn't built for that kind of constant abuse. And it's not just speed, it's sorcery. Armed with high-speed cameras, rhapsodos, and pitch design labs, pitchers are crafting sliders and sweepers that look like they're auditioning for The Matrix. Great for strikeouts, terrible for ligaments, every wicked breaker is a highlight reel for fans, and a slow-motion disaster for elbows. Biomechanics back it up, velocity plus breaking pitch torque equals UCL roulette. Think of the ligament like a savings account. Every pitch is a withdrawal, except pitchers are making nothing but withdrawals, and eventually, the elbow sends out an overdraft notice. Workload. You can't redline all year and expect no damage? Now let's talk about volume. Even the most finely tuned race car engine will blow if you run it redline for too long. For pitchers, that redline is throwing max effort, high velocity pitches, day after day, month after month. The research is crystal clear. Overuse is one of the biggest predictors of elbow injuries, especially in youth and amateur players. In fact, studies from the American Sports Medicine Institute found that pitching while fatigued increases the risk of injury by 36 times. That's not a typo, 36. That's why MLB and USA Baseball rolled out the Pitch Smart guidelines, which set strict pitch counts and rest requirements for kids. For example, a 12-year-old is capped at 85 pitches in a day, and must rest four days if they throw more than 66 pitches. Coaches are also told to give players at least two to four months off from throwing each year. These aren't suggestions, 
They're guardrails designed to keep elbows from imploding before puberty ends. Unfortunately, travel ball culture and showcase tournaments often bulldoze through those guardrails in the pursuit of scholarships and attention. The end result is teenagers showing up to college with elbows that already look like they've spent 10 years in the majors. The pitch clock debate? Red herring or real factor? When MLB introduced the pitch clock, critics were quick to blame it for the uptick in injuries. The theory was that forcing pitchers to work faster meant they had less recovery time between pitches, leading to fatigue and sloppy mechanics. It's a plausible idea, but the evidence so far doesn't hold up. MLB's internal injury review in 2024 found no direct connection between the pitch clock and the surge in elbow injuries. Instead, the data keeps circling back to, you guessed it, velocity and pitch design. So while the pitch clock has sped up the pace of games and annoyed a few veteran relievers, it's not the smoking gun for Tommy John surgeries. Blaming the clock is a little like blaming your bathroom scale for your weight gain. It's not the timer, it's what's happening between the pitches. Training the next generation of injured arms. It's not just a major league problem. The rise of Tommy John surgery is trickling down the pipeline. High school and college pitchers are being operated on at rates that would have been unthinkable a generation ago. Much of this comes back to the obsession with velocity at younger ages. Parents and coaches see radar gun readings as tickets to scholarships or pro contracts, and kids are pushed to throw harder, earlier, and more often. The body can only take so much. The solution here is frustratingly simple but hard to enforce. Protect young arms with pitch limits, mandatory rest, and genuine off-seasons. Let kids play other sports, develop their bodies, and give their elbows a break. The alternative is raising a generation of teenagers who have already undergone a surgery that was once reserved for professionals at the peak of their careers. What happens after the knife? The good news is that most pitchers do come back. The bad news is that not everyone comes back the same. Primary, Tommy John surgery has a strong track record with most players returning to play within 12 to 15 months, but the more times you go under the knife, the steeper the hill becomes. Revision surgeries, those dreaded second Tommy Johns have significantly lower return to play rates and performance often suffers. There's also a new player in the game, UCL repair with an internal brace. Instead of replacing the ligament, this procedure reinforces it with a collagen-coated tape. It's less invasive and offers a faster return to play, sometimes as quick as six to nine months, though it's only suitable for certain types of tears. Early results are promising, but long-term data is still limited. Think of it like duct tape for your elbow. It works surprisingly well when applied correctly, but it won't fix every problem. And that, my friends, is why Tommy John surgery has gone from baseball miracle to baseball epidemic. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want more deep dives into the weird, wonderful, and sometimes tragic world of sports science, do me a favor, smash that like and subscribe to the channel.